Hey, welcome back everybody. Thank you so much for allowing me to give you a little bit more value today. And then in today's video, I'm gonna talk to you about the six human needs. These are the six human needs that Tony Robbins often talks about. And this is something that I learned during one of his courses back in 2019 that is called Date With Destiny. During that program, we learned so much and then we got to find out, you know, dig in into ourselves what is it that's driving a human? Why do we do the things that we do? Why do we, some, some, some people are successful, some others are not. So we often get caught up in these six human needs. So I'm going to break it down to you in a simple way so that it can make sense for you. So stay tuned for that because I'm going to touch them right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So like I said, there are six essential human needs that we all need as a human. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter if you're the president of the United States or just someone out here living, that we all need these human needs. And these are essential to life. It's like the air that we breathe and then essentially the water, the food that we eat, the shelter that we need. These are all essential. So the number one need that we all need as a human is certainty. We wanna feel certain Oftentimes, we want to eliminate stress. We don't want to deal with certain things, right? So because why? We want, to, we want to make sure that we feel certain. The ability to feel certain just gives you that securement, right? That I don't have to deal with that stress. I don't have to talk to that person. I don't want to lead a team. You know, I'm okay. I'm good. This is where I want to be. I'm comfortable. That is the word that we speak. We say comfortable, right? So comfortable gives you certainty that you are okay, that there's nothing else. You want to avoid the stress. You, it's, it's the ability to just produce what you know you can create. So certainty, right? It's the number one need that we all need as humans. Okay, so certainty is the first human need. The second human need, the flip side to that, it's variety. Variety and uncertainty. Why is it a human need being uncertainty? Because a lot of the times, this is, this is the paradox to that. Because a lot of the times, when you, you know that it's your birthday, and it's coming up, and it's right around the corner, or you know you're, you're going to get married, right? You invited a lot of people. You're excited about that. You know that something good is coming. So it's the variety. It is the uncertainty, because you know that something good is coming out. A lot of the times, we just don't like the surprises that are bad, right? When you get the phone call and says, you know what, I'm sorry to tell you, but that, 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 that. Whatever that uncertainty is, those are the, those are the things that make you sad, angry. We just don't want to deal with those. Unfortunately, it's just part of life. So certainty and uncertainty are just the paradox to each other, but uh, we need uncertainty, right? We need the ability for us to feel happy, to feel that, we, that, that there's something good that they're going to give us. Right. And so and so uncertainty and variety, the first two human needs that we need, and they're called a driving force, the driving force, because this is what drives you as a human being. This is what drives you as a person. This is what drives you to to do to 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 live your life. Right. Because you know that there's something good out there. You want to feel certain that things are OK, but also you like the variety. Right. Like I like I gave the example, you're going to get married. And then you know that there's a party coming up. There's people that you invited or your birthday's coming up. You feel happy. There's, there's uncertain things that you know are going to be good. And it's good for the body. It's good for the brain. It's good for the personality of who we are. So these are the first two human needs that I wanted to touch. Okay, so those were the first two human needs that I talked to you about. And those are the driving force. The third one, it's significance. Right. Significance is what makes you feel important, is what makes you feel unique. Right. It's the style that you carry. It's it's you know, it's just the, the feeling of feeling important, the sense of purpose. Right. The separation from the rest and the sense of meaning. It's all about me. You know, I'm the solo player. I'm the solo player. I'm the golf guy. It's me. I'm significant and I'm important. It makes me feel important that you say this to me. I want to achieve a better pay. I want to achieve a better role in my company. I want to do this. I want to feel this. I want to feel significant. So significance is what drives a lot of a lot, a lot of the times yourself to want to do better. There's nothing wrong with being significant, 
right? Because there's absolutely, you can use significance for the good, but also for the bad. A lot of the times you join a gang, right? Because you feel important. You want to be the leader of the gang. And the flip side to that, it's, I want to be a CEO. I want to be a role model. I want to be a leader at my church. Why it makes you, you might not accept it at the moment that you are significant, but you're doing it very unconsciously, not for yourself to feel significant specifically, but the sense of being significant because you have something of value you can contribute to society. So significance is the third human need of the six human needs that we all have as a human. That was the third human need. I'm going to talk to you about the fourth human need. And this is the fourth, the last of the human need of a personality. And this is connection and love, right? We want to feel connected. We want to feel like we part of, we're part of a, of, 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 a, of, of a relationship. You know, we want to feel love. I, I want to feel love myself too, though. You know, I want to feel loved by my, either my spouse, my kids, my family, my coworkers. I want to feel connection. I don't want to be, I don't want to be separated from the rest, right? And a lot of the times this, this gets carried away, especially into this, in today's society where everything is social media, everything is, everything is celebrity, right? You, you, you want to be part of that. You want to feel that connection, something that you can relate to. Again, you know, the connection could be something spiritual. You know, you're part of a church, right? You feel connection with, with that. And it also, it could be, you're part of a gang, Right? You're part of a gang because you, you, you want to feel connected. There are certain values that you value as part of being a gang member, as part of being of a father, as part of being of a church leader. Whatever that connection is, there are certain values that you can relate to. And then therefore, you, you can feel that connection with each other. And then love. We all need love. You know, we all need, need the love when we come out of the womb. right? And when we're babies, when you see a little baby you know when you're giving that baby love he might he or she might not be able to tell you that they're being loved but that's what their joy you know they call them the bundle of joy you can feel it they can feel it they can sense when somebody is angry they can sense when they they're loving them so the babies are a great example of you know why this is a human need love the, the sense of being loved they they literally they literally feed, they literally feed off of a, just being loved and so we all do that as a human beings as well. And as we grow up as in, 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 you know, start becoming into adulthood. So connection and love are part of the four, what Tony likes to call the four personality needs. There are two bigger ones, right? And these are gonna be the spiritual. Now I'm gonna to touch with number five. Number five is growth. Growth is what makes us feel it, 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 it's really what a lot of the times, like I was saying, I want to, I want to grow in life. I, you know what, uh, you know, I've been stuck in this place for so long. I've been doing this for so long. I don't want to live here anymore. You know what? I don't want to have this job anymore. I don't want to be in, I don't want to be, you know, me making the same money that I'm making now. So we want to grow, right? So what, 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 what it is, is, you know, we're looking for something that is going to expand us. That's going to make us bigger a lot of the times when you are when you have a, a a position right let's say of a leader you tend to oftentimes how can i improve how can i be better right we ask the question how can i be better how can i do this better how can i lead the team better so what do we do we seek out ways to improve ourselves to improve the mind and the body growth is what's going to expand us what's going to make us better right so we're looking for ways to improve oftentimes well, not oftentimes, most of the times when you are a leader, you ask yourself the questions, how do I do this? How can I improve the team? How can I lead them better? What can I do to add value? So oftentimes we ask that question and what do we do? We, 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 go, to, we go to books. We start reading self-development books, right? We attend seminars, seminars that are not motiv motivation, but they are more for the self-development of ourselves. So seeking ways to grow as a human being, as a father, as a husband, as a brother, as a sister, whatever that may be, but you're seeking ways to improve and to grow. So growth is part of the, is the fifth, sixth human need, and it's part of the spiritual human need, right? Because the first, the first four 
are going to be the personality. It's going to be the certainty and the number for number one variety as number two, otherwise known as uncertainty. Number three will be significance. And then number four, it's connection and love. Those four human needs are part of the personality. So the last two, which is growth, right? It's part of the spiritual. Okay. So the last one contribution, right? This is, this is the, this is the sixth human need and it's part of the two or the spiritual contribution. There are, think of it like a bullseye, right? The smaller, the tar the smaller, the target, the more complicated it is. So when you think of a bullseye, right, you got the outer side, that will be your certainty. Everybody feels they want to feel certain as it get as it shrinks, right? It starts getting smaller. Now everybody wants to feel we have the variety, the uncertainty, right? Then the significance, then the con connection and love, right? And then the growth. And then when you get to the very, very last part of the bullseye, this is contribution. This is a whole new level that not everybody gets to uh, do consciously. So when you get to this level, this is, this is a, a different part of you. This is a recreation of yourself. Why do I call it recreation? Because when you're young, it's all about you, right? It's all about me. What can I do? You know, what can I do for myself? You know, what's good for me? What's in it for me? So as you get older, right, you start getting into the spiritual needs. That's why growth is very important and also contribution, because when you get to contribution, it's how, what can I do to, what can I do to add value? How can I, can I, can I be a leader of a church? You know, how do I contribute to that? There's a lot of things that I can do in order for me to uh, add value to society. I want to be part of a, a church. I want to be part of a school. I want, I want to volunteer. I have something of value that I can contribute to society. If I'm leading a team of, of Marines, right, in the Marine Corps, and I say Marines because I used to be in the military, our, you know, our, our squad leader or our sergeant, we oftentimes, we, we tend to lead, but we lead by example. We, that's how we like to call it in the military. We like to lead by example. You know, if, if, if I'm doing, if I'm going to tell you to do something, I'm going to do it myself as well. So we're leading with, with, by the example, we're leading with contribution, right? Because we want to make you better. We want to promote you. We want you to be the next corporal. We want you to be the next Marine, the next Sergeant, the next star, staff Sergeant that's going to get promoted up through the ranks. So contribution, it could be in multiple different ways, right? A lot of, the, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, people just contribute by, by uh, donating their time. Right, you volunteer by donating your time. You also there's a lot of philanthropists. You got multi billionaires like Jeff Bezos, Elon, all of the big guys. Right, that that, that Bill Gates that like to contribute to society. So, but you don't have to have money. Okay, I don't want you to think that it's about money in order for you to contribute. A lot of the times, it's not. It's it, well, most of the times, a lot of the times, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to involve just being around money. It could be you volunteering your time, you talking to a person, contributing just the words that you say, how you talk to them, how you lead them. You know, there's going to be, that's why we say, that's why uh, it's very important to remember that the words, they really matter because whatever you say to one person, they'll remember, they will remember you probably to the T, but they'll remember how you make them feel. So that is where you come, you know, with the place of contribution, you're leading with contribution to society. So contribution, it's, 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 it's a huge, huge deal when you get to the spiritual level. And oftentimes you got to be conscious to get into this once, right? You got to be conscious because the, the light bulb kicks inside of your brain and you say, okay, there's something bigger than me. Something is calling me. And I know that I, I can do better. I know that there's something that I can contribute to, to the world to make it better. So that, this is where the contribution part comes in. And that's why it's one of the last ones. And it's actually the small one when you think about a bull side, when you're thinking about the six human needs. Are you doing out there? One, two, three, Okay, so these are these are the six human needs that that uh, we all need as a human. And then again, 
when you're thinking about what is it that I can do better, right? What is it that I need? What is it that, uh, you know, is driving me crazy? What is it that uh, I, I'm just really not, not, not feeling it? What is it that makes me mad? But you know what? I have something better that I could do. I have something better that I can contribute. You know, you're using the human needs. We apply this on an everyday life. And again, this, this human needs were thought the, during the Date with Destiny course that, uh, that I took in, back in 2019 with Tony Robbins. And man, let me tell you, it has made a world and a day and night difference because when I'm talking to people, oftentimes next time you talk to somebody, just listen to how you're talking to them. Listen to how they speak. And then just listen, listen with the intent to listen. And then just think about the six human needs. Is this, is this person trying to feel certain? right? Is she, does she want variety? Does, does he or she want to feel uncertain because they want, they want, they want a surprise or they want to feel, they want to feel significant, right? A lot of the times you hear people saying all about me, I, I, it's about me. So I, you know, that's someone that's significant. Is this person looking for connection and love? Is this person looking to grow, right? Or is this person really trying to contribute and then do something bigger than himself, to the world. So when you're listening to somebody, I challenge you to practice that because now you're not going to do it all the time. I don't do it all the time, but there are a lot of the times where I feel I, 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 I am conscious when I'm listening to this individual, to this person that I'm talking to, and I'm seeking for ways to listen to what they really are trying to say. And oftentimes I feel, okay, I hear them saying, okay, this person wants to feel significant. Right, so making that connection, and and then again in one of my videos, in the other video that I that I that I created, I talk about how to win friends and influence others. This six human needs, and then the six principles, and then go figure. Right, there's six and six. The six principles that Dale Carnegie talks about are essential, and then they go hand in hand with the six human needs that Tony Robbins talks about during his courses and his training seminars that he uh, that he hosts. But uh, next time you're in a conversation, really listen to that person and see what they're really trying to say. Because there's a message hidden behind that they're not telling you. They're telling you, hey, I want to feel significant. Whatever the conversation might be, however the conversation, whoever this person is, how, however you met this person, there's some hidden message behind that conversation that they're let, they're letting you know silently right hey i'm contributing to the world hey i want to feel significant i want to feel certain but you know what i like variety i want to feel uncertain so i challenge you to do that because it will create it's going to be a day and night difference and actually you're going to have a lot of fun doing that because i've done it and, and it's just it's just fun listening to the other person with the intent to listen, obviously, right? And not to make fun of the other person, not to let them know either, hey, you wanna feel significant, none of that. What I'm saying is just really listen, practice that, so that therefore you can make those connections, you know, be a, be a better influencer, be a better leader, be someone that encourages someone else to become better, and this is how you contribute to the world. But with that being said, these are the, these are the six human needs that, like, like I said, that I learned very powerful i highly recommend you that that you watch some of the tony robbins videos and then see what what he you know how he dives in really into detail right and you know he talks about all of them into more detail but uh highly highly encourage you that uh that you pay attention to these six human needs and then next time you have a conversation just remember those human needs that i just talked to you about and like i said Thank you so much for allowing me to share this value with you. And I hope that this served you in some way. And the only I ask that the only ask that I have is that you help us by creating the algorithm, you know, so we can reach out more people. Please help, hit the like button so that therefore you can help us reach out more and then contribute as well at the same time. You know, please don't forget to subscribe as well. And I want to thank you so much for allowing me to come in and give you this valuable information that I learned from the six human needs by Tony Robbins. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.